Sasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, what do we do with white strips of paper? White scraps of paper. Now, this one is going to work best if you have the same width. They don't have to be the same length at all, but they need to be pretty much the same width. I mean, they don't have to be, but you can try whatever. These ones here are generally created from me when I cut down my card fronts down to be uh, three and three quarters by five inches. So I always start with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. That's what I cut all of mine down to. And then... Not all the time at all, but often I cut them down just like this, and then this is what I am left with. Now, these are fantastic for sentiment strips. I will definitely say that, but once I get a pile of them, I definitely like to move them on, and this is one very easy way to go about it. This is just my favorite way of sort of getting rid of them nice and quickly, but using them up and making sure they don't go to waste. Now I'm quickly taking some cracked pistachio and colouring in the background here. This is just onto a card front. You can use any colour. You can use a pre-printed piece of cardstock, anything just to have colour behind it. Now if you have completely coloured scraps, so these pieces here that I'm holding, if you have these that are coloured, then you might want to do a plain white background. So that can be fun too. I've got lots of variations on this one, but I'm just going to keep this one sweet and simple today. This is such a simple uh, little background to create, and yet it is so effective. So we are going to add double-sided tape to the length of these. Now, you most certainly can use uh, liquid glue or cut them up and then put these pieces on but for me it's just most economical and quickest to do these pieces all in big long stripes um at all at once so once you have done that then you are going to cut the pieces um into whatever widths you like now the only thing that you have to remember here is to try and get the cut as straight as vertical as sort of 90 creating 90 degree corners as you can so it does take a minute to sort of, um, not a minute, but you just have to sort of focus that your scissors are directly up and down um, rather than on all sorts of angles. Again, if you do it on all sorts of angles, that's fine, but just make sure you've got them in the same order that you cut them. So I try and make sure that they're just all cut up and down the right way, and then that way they can go in whatever order I wish. Now we are going to be creating a sort of brick lookalike background. I just call this a brick background, and it's sort of a DIY brick. But all you're going to do is leave a little space in between each one of the bricks now you most certainly can have the bricks to be all the same size that would work fine but I quite like them just random and it also makes my life a lot easier it's a lot less measuring and if you've watched the videos on my channel before you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of measuring if I can get away with it so all I do is just make sure that the the joins are um, sort of all all over the place rather than being one on top of the other and then I just go for gold and go all the way down so usually I tend to go plain white on a coloured background or coloured strips on a, a plain white background. But you can just work your way down. If you've got bits that are big enough hanging off the edge, then cut them off and by all means reuse them further down the page because we may as well make the most of it. And this way, honestly, you are left with so few scraps. I usually create a few of these backgrounds at one time just so I've sort of got them sitting there ready to go because often I will create... Um, you know, decorative elements like flowers or anything. And I often have one or two spare because usually I like to have a choice at the end when I'm putting on the final one. Um, but this just comes together really nice and quickly. Flip it over, cut off those little excess pieces and we have a gorgeous DIY brick background ready to go. Now from here, obviously we've just created the background, so there is so much more that you can do. You can add whatever you like onto the front, but just look how stunning this is. This is gorgeous, so easy, no measuring involved, which I'm grateful for, and just pop them down and you've got a gorgeous brick background. Now I am going to uh, finish this card off so that you can see how I would finish this off. I have the visible image stamp set. This is called Forever in Your Heart and it is one of my absolute, this feather is just gorgeous. It's one of my absolute favorites. I love the sort of bubbles and heart set as well. I love the sentiments. They are sweet and gorgeous. But for just today, I'm going to be using this feather. 
Now I'm, I've kept a few of the bloopers in here because I think it's pretty funny to watch. Um, I am going to ink this up with some Frasafine Onyx Black Ink, just a beautiful solid black stamping ink. I have a little scrap of paper here that I'm going to pop this down onto. Now just for this technique I'm going to need to um, add a clear layer of embossing powder for this one. If you've used a waterproof ink then you may be okay, I'm not sure, but anyhow I just give it a go, put some clear embossing powder over top, heat this and then it leaves a surface. Now this is just cardstock, this is what I have chosen to do it on so um, you know this may not work with every single ink, but I want to create a really domed glass feather. So I need some background colour, I'm going to use some, I think it's cracked pistachio and maybe salty ocean or something blue along those lines and I am going to just dab some of the colour on. Now I recently re-inked my ink pads too so they are very juicy. Now this looks like a hot mess as I said, we're going to make a big glass dome over this but I'm just using a damp little baby wipe, a wet cloth to blend these colours in together just a little bit pull back that blue, there was quite a lot of blue, so I can add a little bit more cracked pistachio over top and even the heat embossing sort of helps this glide on a little bit. As I said this is just plain normal cardstock, it's not even watercolour cardstock but that's okay and this is just a background so I know you're thinking this looks a little interesting but I promise we're going to make it look good. This card turns out absolutely gorgeous. So this is what we've got so far and we need to work on this a little bit more. Now whilst the ink is wet from the Distress Oxide ink, I'm going to add a layer of clear embossing powder again. Then I melt it, then I'm going to use my finger to apply just a little bit of the Versamark, just the sticky embossing ink because I didn't cover all of the uh, Distress Oxide ink and I was worried that if I put my, dis my Versamark um, ink pad down onto it, I didn't want to get any blue ink transferred. So at this point I think I have two layers of the clear embossing powder on top of the feather and it is beautiful and glossy. But before I can't anymore I'm going to fussy cut out this feather. It's a relatively simple shape with some little sort of V notches popped into it for detail and so it makes it easy for me to fussy cut. But if I make the heat embossing too thick then I won't be able to fussy cut through it. So that's why I'm doing that now. And then I'm going to run around the outside edges with a black marker. That's just because I stamped in the black ink. I always use a coordinating um, marker colour to whatever ink I stamped in. And this just makes my fussy cutting look a whole lot better. It takes away the white core of the cardstock. I really like this finished look. But from here I truly do want to add, I want to make this a really domed glass embellishment or glass, faux glass embellishment. So I'm actually going to keep going and add lots and lots of layers. Now if you have the ultra thick embossing powder which is basically just a chunkier uh, embossing powder and clear, I do have it and I just chose not to use it this time round. I actually forgot all about it. It's a massive jar that I keep hidden at the back of my drawers. Um, so all I'm going to do is keep adding layers and layers and layers of embossing powder and this feather gets so so thick. Now if you move quickly and you melt your embossing powder you can actually just dip it in without having to add any more ink. It does come out chunky but for this one I'm trying to create I want there to be a really thick layer. It is going to start moving around and pulling um, which is absolutely beautiful <laughs> but how many times do you think I can drop this feather and it goes face down onto my work surface. So I dropped it a fair few times and every time I drop it while it's wet, the a whole big chunk of the clear embossing powder comes off. So I sort of had to add more and more, but that's okay. So it does look like I added a lot of layers and it is very thick domed, sort of glassy look. Now I have this Doodlebug Happy Birthday. I know you've seen this lots and lots of times. It's just a fabulous, gorgeous little set. And these bricks happen to be wide enough that they can fit the word happy. And then one down, I'm going to fit the word birthday. So just ser search through what you have. See what might fit on these little bricks. Otherwise, you could just add a gorgeous little circle or an oval or anything, even a piece of vellum coming in from the side, like a half circle, a semicircle of vellum, that would look beautiful. But these ones just happen to fit on the bricks. I'm popping this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And then this beautiful big thick feather is going to go down the sides there. I did think a gorgeous little bow, it needs just something else to it. And so you know that I love my twine bows. So I just cut a little bow 
I make the ends uh, a little bit shorter and then I actually am going to pop the feather up on some foam tape as well. It is truly the focal point of this image. I love the background, I love that we took the cracked pistachio from in between the bricks and we've used it in the feather as well so everything is going to coordinate nicely. And then this little gorgeous bow I'm going to pop on with some liquid glue just because I find that that is going to be the strongest hold, once it's dry the strongest hold on the uh, little domed surface there of the feather. So it's very hard to pick up in the video what it looks like but it's absolutely stunning. I add a few little enamel dots and that is going to finish off the video for today. So this is what I do with all of my little white scraps. I turn them into things like this brick background. So I hope you are inspired. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. As usual, I will have the links down below in case you'd like to check out any of the products. I will also have the link to the Buy Me A Coffee in case you'd like to support me. Thank you to those that have gone through to the website and supported me. Thank you for those that choose to take their time to leave me a comment. I love reading through them. I answer as many as I possibly can. Thank you so much for your likes and love and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.